Uh, so right now he can walk and of course he can like strafe to the right or left and he can like run and strafe and jump. His jump animation looks great. Uh, I've got that worked out a little bit better. So this first strategy for aiming uh, while walking or strafing or whatever animation you want to do at the same time while you're uh, aiming, um, I created a really basic 1D animation blend. Um, it's just walking with one arm down and walking with one arm out uh, right in the middle there, like and then another one that's uh, just going to show the arm straight up. Right. So if you're in a game and you're running around in this third person setup, right, you can move your mouse up or down to aim. So the, the arm, of course, is going to go up or down. Right. And that's that's kind of like the point of what I was trying to do here. And I had already developed a basic animation tree and, and you can check those out in some previous videos that I had. I really wanted to have a little bit more immersiveness in the game, right? You want to be able to aim up and actually see the, you know, the player's arm go up to like kind of be in line with wherever they're pointing the gun. So this was my first attempt at, at that. And, and I felt that, well, maybe what I can do is just blend a walking with the arm out, walking with the arm up and straight down and just blend those all together. But I quickly realized that that's not going to really work well because as you move the arm up, I, I don't know if it's apparent here, but there's like collisions between the center point and the uh, rightmost point or the leftmost point as you're blending the arm to go up and down. It does. It's not a smooth blend. And there's like it's almost like a sine wave collision, like where the waves cancel out of his walking animation. And you can see here, it just looks like he's bunny hopping or he's aiming the gun straight up uh, or towards, you know, a vertical point and that that's not really going to work, right? You're not going to be able to show your guy moving around the map with this odd uh, setup here. So I, I quickly kind of abandoned the full walking. So like if if it doesn't make sense, if this whole point here is a full body walking animation with the gun pointing down, full body animation with the gun pointing out and so on and so forth with up. And it just it didn't really blend well. So I, I kind of abandoned that and I think I was experimenting with doing each one separate through transitions and that obviously if you know if we put this output over here you can't really blend between those in a way that makes sense um and then i i also experimented with like a blend 2d space just to make sure that there wasn't some gotcha with maybe the blend 1d space didn't work and of course that you know also that 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 really produced very similar results so if i come down here he's out he's down and with this one like it, it felt a little smoother because they were like distinct points, but I thought that trying to aim out with zero, you know, down with one and up with zero one or whatever the coordinates are, I, or one zero or one one, I should say, you know, it, it didn't feel like that would be a scalable solution. I think this would have probably worked a little better uh, for that, but I just didn't think in practice I wanted to pursue that route. Now, Again, this whole journey here and these struggles I'm showing you, I'm still not 100% sure of which which direction I want to go. And that's kind of how development is, right? Like you kind of pick the strategy that works best for your current requirements and feature set that you're trying to build out or, you know, whatever you're trying to accomplish. So a lot of this is fluid and things change, right? So with where I end up today may not be where I end up next week or whatever and maybe I run into a roadblock or maybe you guys comment and say why are you doing it this way just do it this way right so you know also keep that in mind if you're watching something because you know I'm I'm still trying to wrap my brain around this animation stuff but so I kind of abandoned the the method of blending full on uh animations here and and I, I started thinking about other ways I can do that so I wanted to maybe isolate the walk animation or strafe or whatever animation I'm going to have while he's holding a gun out and isolate those two things. So instead of blending them together. So when I moved on to my next, I guess, phase of work, I made something that looked a little like this and it has this base transition here where there's idle walk run. I want to build out every single animation for every time I was experimenting, right? Because this was just I was trying to learn, like, how can I do this? How can I run and still aim the animations that this character has is idle, walk, run, uh, you know, strafe and jump really just the basic fundamentals. I'm not doing anything crazy with this. this you know, I'm not dashing or anything like that or any kind of extraneous animation. So 
and and the rules for my game right now is you're able to aim while you're standing still so idle and walk or strafe uh but when you're running or jumping the gun just kind of does its own thing i'm not gonna allow for that in this in the, at least in this current demo set I picked a strategy where I wanted to isolate the arm up down animation from the actual walking or motion. So in this case, it would be idle, walk, strafe, if I think of another movement or whatever. So I wanted to figure out how I can isolate those things and still blend them together. So I came up with this strategy here where I wanted to blend the walk. So this is like, if just to review really quick, this is a you know standard walking, and this is, I think, yeah, strafe left and strafe right. Uh, respectively and i blend that into this arm blend space down here so i basically went into blender and just chopped out all the motion and just had a guy standing there moving you know his arm or just holding his arm up or holding his arm down that's really this one arm forward animation like if we go over to the animation player so one arm forward is him just basically aiming his arm out that's the rest of his body is, is just ignored here right that's that's why it looks like he's in a t pose so if we come back, if we re-enable our animation tree, that's what this isolation uh, arm blend space is doing. It's just taking the walk and it's, uh, I should say this blend is taking the walk animation and blending that into the arm. And I had touched on this in a few previous videos, but I just thought that the struggle here was interesting of like how I was progressing through this. So this is one arm forward and this is one arm up. We just move him back in the range. And then, of course, uh, if you go over here, one arm uh, down this uh, leftmost. So you can see it's a pretty nice, smooth transition. You still have that nice walk. He's not his feet are going going to be smooth through, you know, as he's moving around the map. And I think I think that was a pretty good compromise for the setups that I had so far. And again, so I'm blending them here, but that means I also have to apply a filter. So you have to hit this enable filter. And I went down and said, everything from the arm down to the, like the right hand pinky i filter out and i i feel like filter is a funny word for me my brain wants to say isolate so i wanted this to say like isolate filter or isolate bones or something because it's basically saying like only blend in those isolate those isolated bones uh so it's only blending in that arm and we blend that into the walk and this was a great step so once i saw i could do this and I've been using this demo or, or this in the last few videos and I did a stream on it if you want to check out how I actually set it up. But uh, so I, I was excited to get there and see, you know, see how I can expand this. And because I'm looking ahead, I'm thinking, well, how is this going to scale? Right. I'm going to have walk, strafe and idle, but then I'm going to have, you know, arm straight out and then, you know, rifle stance and submachine gun stance or grenade stance. Right. And you know, where am I going to put all that stuff? Am I going to have a separate transition for everything? So this is really where the struggle came in. Like I knew that I could do the basic arm up down animations, but how do I expand that? So I think what I did here as like a next step is, and again, this isn't a complete build out, right? I was just doing minor proof of concepts until I could piece it all together. And I think what I was doing here, if we pull it up, is I was taking into account that scale. My, so this was my first attempt at scaling. Well, so at zero, uh, you're basically walking and then over to the right, I think it's right strafe. Yeah, so I ended up going with jog instead of the strafe right animation. It just seemed to work better. Um, and then of course we're left. But if we look at zero one, so he's basically just walking with holding the gun straight out. OK, and and then uh, as it goes to the right, it's going to be a strafe right with arm out. And then the left would be, you know, the I actually didn't build out the right side because this is a proof of concept. So I just I just made an animation for the left side. So the right sides aren't going to work. But uh, so as you go forward, OK, his arm moves out. Now, that's not going to make sense because you're like, where where's why isn't his arm coming out? Well, I knew that if uh i just assumed that there would be a an arm there right i assumed that i would basically i think what i what i could do is uh come back over here and then just kind of let me see if i can undo this blend um is that what i was trying to do no i don't think i think what i was trying to figure out here was i i knew that i knew that there would be another blend for the arm so i knew that that could work but i didn't even make it that far right because i knew that it, by the time I even come over here and do this, this is where he would be uh, strafing to the left with his arm gun out. 
and I knew that I would have a blend, right? I knew I would have a blend like this here into this walk so that his arm would actually come out straight. So right now he's just like in T pose because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm ignoring that arm. And to explain this a little better, what I did in Blender is I went in and as I made a walking animation where or a strafe animation where it just ignores that right arm. So he's like running and everything's moving, except the right arm is just like hanging there dead. And and that's exactly why I have this uh, jog strafe left hold pistol right, because it's 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 a terrible name. It should be like ignore right hand jog strafe left or whatever, uh, because it's basically ignoring that right hand so that you can use a blend like this with these filters to blend in that, you know, arm up down action. Uh, so that was kind of the point of this. So I knew I would be able to do that, uh, but I just kind of looked at this and said, well, how am I going to expand this? How am I going to add more um, weapon stances like two handed weapons or like I said, the knife or grenade stance? And it just really didn't make sense once I got to this point. Uh, and, and again, I, I just I, I walked through this and then I just did this as a little aside. And I probably even had these blended up at one point and then I eventually just went back to the drawing board. And the reason why I, you know, made that like kind of ignore right arm animation is because if you notice here, he has the gun out, but he's like in the game, he's supposed to be aiming. He's supposed to be his arm is supposed to be like solid there, like aiming like while he's walking like and, and his arms not going to be like moving around all over the place if he's being serious. And I, I kind of wanted that immersion a little bit. And if you look at his animation, his guns just like wobbling around all over the place. He's not going to hit anything. So I thought it would be a good idea to to correct that wobble to have this like isolated animation to blend those two together where the walking animation, there's like your normal walking animation and then there's the walking animation where his arms just right arm is just dead and then you'll be able to successfully blend in that, you know, aim up and down using that technique uh, and right here. I didn't do that, right? He's still wobbling all over the place. His gun's wobbling all over the place. So I came down here. I ran through that setup and, uh, you know, I was like, well, if if that's if that's how this is going to look, it's not really going to work well, right? Because if 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 it's like wobbling, if it's not wobbling all over the place, like right here where I have it working actually pretty well, that gun's fixed. It's locked in the place and we'll see more in that in a second. But I just was concerned that this wasn't going to scale. So hopefully I'm not blabbering too much about this and if it makes a little bit sense. But, you know, this blend tree, you can just basically disable it any time and he goes back to the normal walk. So I knew I had that to my advantage. And then once you needed the gun, you just flip that back on. But I think that there was some limitations that I felt at this time that weren't going to work. And then my next iteration, um, I, I thought I had landed on something. As you can see, it's it's built out a little bit more. Um, I got my jump animations built out right here, this row here where he can like jump up and and, uh, you know, there's this walk blend, run blend. And down here I have the uh, uh, the aim blend. So that's his like arm up down. Right. That's his that's his arm aim. And I create this big transition where he has the different types of animation. So he's walking and I think I can turn on run and he'll run or whatever. But, you know, for this demo, running doesn't doesn't allow you to shoot. But the uh, the walk blend I used to try to solve the problem that I discovered in the last setup was, you know, I was experimenting with, well, can I just do different points for to ignore the arm? Right. So there'd be like walking, walking without arm uh, and that would be the gun stance. And like in here, uh, I ended up putting idle in the middle for some reason. Right. This is experimentation. And then to the right, I have strafe and and then forward uh, the, the one zero one is walking. And then up here, I thought, well, what if I just scale if I make a scalar of the walking and that would be holding the pistol out, right? That would be holding the pistol out. And and of course, these would be the opposite. So backwards walking and, you know, walking backwards with pistol out. I, I later realized that you don't need these. I don't know why I went I digress there. But um, and then to the left is the one that I was actually able to build out where you can see him, you know, holding a, a gun. But this is it one. Uh, zero and again, this is a, a zero one negative one because I, negative one zero because I was experimenting. It should be just strafe and not hold gun out strafe. But I I knew that what strafe right looked like, so I assumed well, I knew what left was. So I kind of just moved it down here. So see how the gun's locked? Like he's not moving. He's strafing. That gun is like locked in place, and and that's the opposite of what's happening with the the uh, right one without that 
uh, arm dead modification that ignoring the arm that animation that just doesn't have anything moving except it just has that arm stuck in that place so this is really kind of good demonstration of that and and again this point should be over here at two but again this was just for prototyping and and then I was like, what am I going to do? Make a scaler for each animation. So this is just one arm out. What about knife and grenade? Like I keep repeating and the two handed weapons. Like, am I just going to make two, three, four and just come out and blend this tree? And, and also the blending was a little funky. Uh, I don't I, I mean, it, it looks pretty good here between the two, um, but it's going to produce something similar to this. And the feet just I don't know. The feet don't really look that great. Um, yeah, the feet look a little wonky, but I don't know. I think I think it would have been OK. It would have been acceptable to a point. But I was quickly realizing that, you know, fixing this wobble and introducing uh, another set of animations for every weapon type. Right. I mean, if you have uh, 50 pistols in your game, you might be able to get away with the same animation and, and same with two handed weapons. And and maybe maybe, you know, but if you're playing a more complex game and you're making a, a, a major game and you have like all kinds of different weapon weapon stances and positions and grips and holding and, you know, whatever you're doing with your gun, you know, that could get a little complex. And I just really didn't think there was a way forward with this. So I felt this was a step in the right direction because I was able to kind of rule out that that problem. Uh, or that that path with the blend. And plus, I didn't like how I didn't have idle in our main transitions. I, I think putting idle in the walk blend was kind of a mistake and, and a lessons learned. And, and again, this whole process that I'm showing you right now was really an experimentation and kind of the struggles through like actually where I ended up. You know, it, it, I had to go through all this to really understand the animation. And, and I recommend doing the same. Just immerse yourself in this and learn what all these individual things do pick some requirements, get your animation scope ready and then just dive in and see what you can do. So at this point, I'm a little lost and I go back to my drawing board. Literally, I have a drawing board and I nobody's going to be able to read this. I don't even know why I'm showing it, but I, I'm I'm sketching out the the transition types or the the the, the different animation options like blend 1D, 2D and, and the transitions. And I'm, I'm trying to like map out on paper how this is going to work, because I you know, at some point, you know, you kind of after banging your head against it, you you kind of get what each thing does and, and you'll be able to move to pen and paper and you don't have to experiment so much in the application. But you can see I was experimenting with like 1D blends or you probably can't see. But, you know, there's basically strafe. Uh, I was drawing out strafe 1D blends and like uh, was I able to, you know, do a transition between those and you know, and then I would write like it doesn't work. Player moves too much. You know, this was like actual notes that I was writing and then I was trying to do that blend, which is basically a summary of the first things we've just covered. And and then, I, of course, I moved over to this next one. And I think I was getting pretty excited because I was making progress. And I was like, well, what if we do a 2D with, you know, different states of, of you know, weapon drawn while walking or not weapon drawn? And, and that's really what we just looked at. So I had, you know, was really struggling to to make progress on this. And I had gone back and forth and and really this diagram probably doesn't do justice about how much I've actually like torn this apart. And and, and you know, I kind of cleaned it up a little bit for the video, but that's that's pretty much where I landed. And, and I was kind of stuck for a while. Then I was thinking, well, what if I just try something completely different? What if I just use a bone attachment? So went over to the player model and grabbed the skeleton reference. Let's just create a bone attachment. And if I can just attach that to shoulder right arm and I can, you know, what, what can I do? I can come down here and uh, I can see if I'm uh, I guess I have to override pose. Right. So I can kind of turn it from side to side and then I can, you know, move that arm up and down. I was like, man, this is actually, you know, this doesn't look too bad. Like I can. What if what if I just attach a bone to that or whatever and 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 see how that's going to go? But, you know, the second you turn those animations back on. And OK, so I have the animation back on it. And if you'll notice, if I go back over to the bone, uh, things aren't really looking good, right? Because you have to do this override pose. If I uncheck that, he's he's just he goes back to the normal idle animation or whatever it is. But the second you try to override that and manipulate the arm, it it doesn't. I mean, it's completely detached. So and I'm like, well, what if I just choose a different arm? What if I just do the I don't know, forearm or something like that? And it, yeah, like it looks good for that part. But then the whole other arm is detached. There almost needs to be like a secondary mode where where it's like override pose, but also still blend in with the skeleton. And I don't know, I, I thought this would been would have been a perfect 
way to do this. Uh, and, and if you guys have an example or if you have some feedback on this part of it, was I close here? Was this was this derailment here? Not really a derailment. Was I was should I have been able to follow up with this? Like, could you actually like follow this body movement? Like, could I have actually made like another arm attachment that I can attach this bone to that follows the player? I mean, because I, I would totally revisit this again, like maybe 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 I missed something, maybe adding a 3D node underneath the shoulder and having it linked to that, you know, arm, you know, the arm joint or whatever. Maybe that would have worked out. But I quick I saw this and just was like, no, this this doesn't seem like it's going to be a good example. But I mean, maybe it is. Maybe you guys have some more experience with this uh, and you'll have a better you'll have a better judgment of whether this was the right path or not. But I quickly abandoned that. I don't know. Maybe that was an unfortunate abandonment. But, you know, I got rid of that. And uh, I guess I need to undo the <laughs> arm just in space there. Hopefully I can get it back to normal. Oh, no, that I break him. What's going on, guy? Let me see if I can just. Uh, oh, I did. I <laughs> I left another arm, but there we go. Let me see if it should should clean up once I reactivate him. Let me see if I can reactivate him. Oh, no, I guess I just crashed it. So after the bone experiment failed miserably, I, you know, I, I was looking at this again and I I went back to my freeform diagram and and I was just trying to write down everything I needed. And I, I felt like I felt like at some point I made the um, I think the light bulb went off with state machines. So I felt that maybe if I could figure out how to make different states for, you know, arm one arm out, uh, two arms out or, you know, a knife animation, if I could figure out a way to have states that represent those different things, I'd actually be able to pull this off. So I was just rewriting everything that I wanted to do, um, you know, idle with a grenade and uh, walk with gun forward, up, down and strafe right with gun up, down. And, you know, maybe I'd put like a, a weapon fire uh, one shot or whatever they call that uh, off to the side of it. And, you know, down here, the state machine was toggling between them. So you'd, you'd start with like walk and you I don't know why I'm showing this. No one's going to be able to read this, but this is really my chicken scratch. I was trying to write down the different states that my animation was going to use. So what I did is um, I actually experimented first, right? So I was making a prototype and I made a jump state machine. I figured if I can make a state machine with jump, this sounds great, right? Like why, why should I do all three of these in this fashion? And uh, I mean, it works great. Like if I, if I come over here and I do jump up, he'll jump up. And then if I click on this transition, uh, jump up auto advances to jump down. So right now he's in that like falling phase and, and yeah, he should be kind of moving around a little bit that would be an improvement for my animation but again I'm, I'm trying to do this in a timely manner and then once that uh you know once that jump down gets hit and if i hit jump land he just lands on the ground and goes right back into that walking uh into that walking phase um so i had built out i didn't want to do this so i was like well what can i do a state machine with jump so let's just look at a jump test down here and uh well, let's open up the state machine because uh, this made a lot of sense to me. So what will happen is we immediately go to jump up um, and he'll jump up like we just we, like we just saw. And then if we go over to uh, jump down at the end of jump up, it goes to jump down. So that's like going up in the air and then like hovering and like falling. Right. That's this. And then this transition here will only occur when this condition jump land is met. Right. So that makes perfect sense. So that condition is what this uh, little check, I should probably zoom in, what this little checkbox is right here. Uh, so once that, once he's landed, once your code detects that he's on the ground, then you go ahead and fire that jump land and it'll go ahead and just, I think, I don't think I have anything. Yeah, at the end of the land animation, it just goes and kicks, it and kills the state machine and goes back to whatever, because I think I have auto advanced on this. Yeah, so if this was your real jump, you just leave auto advance and auto advance just puts you right back to the next animation, which in this case is the topmost which is walking. So in theory, this should work great. So if we run it and there he is in the jump down state. So again, that's he's stuck right here. He's waiting on that condition. And then if I go ahead and, and satisfy that condition, and this is great that Godot's, uh, by the way, added this in the other. It allows you to really test out your conditions. Uh, so I hit that and he lands perfect and he goes right back to that walking. But if you notice, he kind of his arm kind of like flung out for a second and I, I'm not going to lie, that little arm thing really 
really got me for a minute. I, I was stuck on that for a while. And um, if you watch it again, his arm flips out in a previous uh, iteration of this. Uh, if I'm selecting the transition, I had this uh, fade time set to zero and I don't think there's any blend times on these. Uh, yeah, there is. OK, so if you look at the blend time on this transition to end, I have it at point two and, and I had even experimented with this jump down on point two or whatever, and it didn't really seem to make a difference. But I actually had it at zero and his arm goes straight out to the side and, and then he would go in the walking. So it was like there was no nice way to transition it. Well, when I moved it to point two and point two uh, on the transitions that that got that smoothed out a lot. And I, I thought that it was almost acceptable that his arm kind of flung out a real, for a second. But that doesn't make sense to me. This kind of threw me. This was like a wrench thrown into the gears. And I, I really got stuck on this because I was like, why is this T pose? It's almost like he's going from the state of jump land to T pose really quick to walking. And, it, and it's all this blend. So I really would like to know why this is happening. And I tried Googling this or searching for this and I couldn't find anything. And the transition was the only way that I thought would alleviate that. It still kind of happened. And I, I kind of didn't like that that was happening. And I thought that maybe state machine wasn't the way to go. So I was really kind of devastated when this state machine thing wasn't working because I thought that just that wasn't good enough for me. But um, so I ended up just kind of isolating them and, and doing it this way. And, and that works, too. But. Uh, it's ultimately kind of I lost a bunch of time on that. Yeah. And another thing about this setup I didn't like was how I have idle in the middle and walking as uh, whoops, as walking backwards, like as its own nodes. I thought that this was a like this is so this is unnecessary. This is like redundant. Um, and if you can see back here, I had already you know, we already know that we can use time scale or maybe you don't know. I don't know. But like you, you can use time scale to reverse. Uh, your animation so you don't really need a separate node uh, so he's walking forward if i just do negative one now he's walking backwards so i would use that to uh you know enforce those uh forward and backward if you can i mean if if your animation calls for it and you want to have a different node for backward and forward or maybe there's some use case that i'm not aware of but it felt like i didn't really need to do that so these blend trees that i had created had that separate node for that and i, I just didn't really like that so eventually i you know i i hit the docs again i read through them and i watched probably a dozen youtube videos and all these videos were just scratching the surface they were just really basic blend trees and basic animations and no one was really covering how how do you scale like like how do you add a bunch of animations to your game and you know if you have a list of weapons that may have several different animations and in different stances like I, I guess there's a point where you have to compromise like even for first person games like if you're a pvp you're gonna have to see the other person doing you know and aiming around right like how would you do that and and i and i want to accomplish that i'm i'm working with a 3d world right now and i'm third person so i get to see it and the other players get to see it so it has to work at least you know my bar set pretty low for how well this is supposed to look right and i, and I still don't like wasn't liking how this was going to turn out without, you know, being able to aim around and that kind of thing. So, you know, like I said, I hit the docs. I was just pen and paper. And at some point when I was writing down that those state machine points, it, it hit me that I, I think what I'm describing here, like different weapon stances felt like state machines. They felt like states. They felt like states in a state machine. And and I, I went back to the state machine strategy and I ended up with this. And again, this isn't completed. This is a work in progress, uh, but I think it may be a decent illustration of where I'm going to go with this. And again, this this video is it's not complete, but I, I hope that maybe by next week I'll have this fleshed out a little bit more with some better examples. And, you know, I'll be able to come back and say, yeah, this was the way to go. This was this was great. Uh, but and again, if you guys have feedback, let me know. And And really, let me just connect the output to it. Um, so this is like, I don't know <laughs> why it's, why he's T posed like that. Let me see if I can change the animation. Yeah. Sometimes like when you switch, it like kills itself and it just goes back into T pose mode. And one of the main underlying reasons I'm using a state machine or why I felt the state machine was a good idea is because I felt that your weapons, your weapons metadata should carry 
which animation it should be using and which stance it should be using, right? So whether you have like a dictionary or a database or hard coded weapon information, wherever your list of weapons are, those weapon, that weapon data should have what animation it should be using and you know, which stance, you know, is it single handed, double, you know, whatever that animation is, you know, it should be able to reference that and supply that to the game. Like the game should, your game code should just be like, okay, weapon, what animation do you want? And then I thought that there should be a state machine or a state within a state machine that should represent that different we weapon stance, whether it's one handed or whatever. And I'm over here dancing. Uh, but I wasn't really sure how to do that. And when I finally got to this point, when I, you know, through several iterations of playing around, what made sense to me was making the actual walk animation and any subsequent variations of the walk its own state. And what I mean by that is if you transition to walk, so your walk state is, you know, piped into this state machine. So at the base level, I don't have an animation. I have a state machine. So if we open that state machine, you're going to have your basic walking without a weapon. You're just walking around the city or wherever your world is, and you can just transition between a strafe to the right and a strafe to the left. And, and it just that's that's great. So that's your without weapon. That makes sense. But then you're going to have another state that is with a weapon hold right hand out. So this is your right hand out. And this is important because these animations, if we look at these animations, these are the animations that ignore that right arm, right? So he's walking, but his right arm is basically dead because that's the arm you're going to blend with with the aim animation uh, later on in the blend tree. So this is like, you know, left strafe with arm dead and then right strafe, right? And it's not working right now because I didn't select it. But if we if we enable that now, he's strafing to the right. OK. Uh, yeah, to the right. So let's just bring him back to the left because the left, the right. I, remember, I didn't set up anything to the right. I only set up things to the left. Um, but so right now he's strafing to the left, but his animation on his arm is ignored. OK, so at the same time that your player starts strafing and he has a gun in his hand or he's toggled up his weapon, you also need to toggle the blend that tells the arm to aim. So over there, I have another state machine, right? So this blend is off. So if I turn the blend on, that means it's going to be enabled. But let's just leave it off for a second. If we go in that state machine, I have. OK, so this is where that metadata comes in. If this pistol has metadata, it would say I need to go to condition pistol number one arm aim or whatever animation. So this is that animation, in that state machine. And right now, uh, I think I just I think this is just like arm. Yeah, one arm forward. Right. OK, but it's not enabled right now. So if I play that, I think I have to play it or no, I have to do the condition. Right. So, OK, yeah. So this is that this that this transitions condition set right here. So if I set that condition and I turn this blend on now, he's got his arm up. OK, and at that point, you're actually able to go into uh, this 1D blend space inside the state machine and you're able to map you know, the, the player moving the camera up and down to moving the arm up and down respectively. Right. So now it's forward, it's up. And this looks great because you've got your strafe or your walk or whatever animation isolated. You've got your arm animation separate from that, you know, walking animation and you have it in its own state. So the key here is if I created another, if I had another pistol animation where it was like, one arm out or whatever, I can just add that here. Maybe it was a different type. Maybe he had a side stance where he's holding the gun sideways or upside down or I don't know whatever other single, you know, arm pistol animations you would have, but you would add those states here. And just to recap, your walk state machine will have whatever type of, I guess, stance that you want to ignore. So if you had a walk with two handed weapon, you would create another this is in theory, right? I haven't I haven't gotten here yet, right? So this is let's just create another what is this, a blend space 1D. Let's say you create another blend space. So this would be like two handed, whatever, two handed stance. OK, and you that, that would be for walking, right? So this would be walking two handed stance and you would have another state. You'd have another transition to that. That stance would uh, have a walking animation where both his arms were ignored, right? Because you need to be able to animate and isolate 
both those arms up and down. So in theory, and maybe even his back, maybe you have like an additional backbone muscle that allows him to bend up instead of just, you know, his arm up and down, or maybe his head and neck. You can really get fancy with this. So this was the point is that for every stance or high level type of stance, you would have like a separate uh, state in here. So there's one for like one arm. Maybe there's one for grenade because your arms like back here like this. And maybe there's one, you know, because you can like look up or down or whatever. And maybe there's one for two handed stance or a sword, maybe. And whatever those bones are, you would just remove those from your blender animation and add them as a separate state here that you would be able to blend between, you know, whether it was, uh, you know, strafing, it, you know, of course, it would always be strafe left, strafe right. So you'd have a lot of duplication, but it would be easy duplication. It would be something that would. So this for the two handed one, when you went strafe to the left, you know, he wouldn't his one arm wouldn't be ignored. Both arms would be ignored. And then you come back to this state machine out here and then you would blend in you'd have another uh you'd have another state here for two hand two hand uh weapons now i'm struggling a little bit to talk about this because it's still pretty fresh to me and i think if if i don't know if some of you maybe you maybe you picked up on this but there is one limitation right now and that is this blend right here these animations this animation in here where he's moving the arm up or down how are you going to do that with two hands right that's not going to work so that's where i think an additional improvement will be made i, I think you're going to have to have a blend for each uh separate you know weapon stance category maybe one for two-handed weapons you know this is the one-handed weapon maybe one for knife so it's almost like for every you know, you're going to have a hierarchy, so you're going to have a few animations, uh, separate animations where he ignores parts of the body and, you know, for your walk. And then you're going to have a matching hierarchy for those. So it's probably going to be like three or four for my game and then three or four maybe here. And then down in your state machine is where it gets, I guess, where you build out those different animations. So this one's for pistol. So if there's any other different pistol animations, you would just add those states here. And then you would have another blend for two handed weapons. And then you would have the states, you know, for two handed weapon states, maybe one like this, maybe one like this, maybe one like, I don't know, maybe there's a dual handgun where he's like shooting straight ahead like that, like he has a turn um, and maybe that and then another one for a knife or whatever. And I think that that is the best way I, this so far, right? This is so far the best way I've seen to be able to scale and add a lot of animations that you want to add for, you know, for your game and still be able to strafe and and walk or whatever animation it is uh, that you want to apply these aiming to. Maybe there's a better way. Maybe I completely missed a mark. Um, let me know if you've uh, going to think of a better way. But I guess what I would have to do is put another, you know, because this transition goes into just the pistol one right now, I guess I would have to put another transition here. Um, and I'm not even sure that would work. Maybe there would have to be another state machine. I, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure how I'm going to switch between the different blends here. I'm hoping I can just stick another transition, you know, right here in between this two uh, that's toggles between the different blends, right? So you'd have like one handed blend, two handed blend, uh, knife blend or whatever, and you would pipe into this transition. And then this one would, you know, obviously it would. Um, now that I'm saying that, I'm like wondering how that would, you know, how, how would you actually do that? I don't know. I again, like, so I, I'm I'm basically thinking on my feet right now. I'm not 100% sure how I would make that work, but I think I can make it work with by having different blends um, and maybe maybe not. Maybe there's going to be another sub states where, um, you know, you have a state machine or a state machine down here again. I'm still just trying to figure this out. But for right now, I feel like this was the best setup for being able to add uh, different stances and support multiple you know weapon stances types and be able to aim up and down and, and i guess the, maybe maybe i missed that but maybe the reason why if you haven't picked up on it is the reason why you need different blends is because this filter only works for the right arm right now these are whatever these are hard coded i didn't even look up yet if you can do this programmatically now if you can do this programmatically then you don't need a state machine because what you could do is uh, you could programmatically set, right? So for your two-handed gun, it's meta would be like, here's what I need you to filter for the two-handed. So it'd be like right shoulder, right arm, and then left shoulder, left arm, and all the subsequent uh, underlying, you know, forearm and fingers and all that. 
and then you could just apply that filter in real time. That's a, that's a really good thing. So I wonder if you can apply filters. So, so maybe in the next week's video, I'll have this all figured out. And if you can apply those filters in real time in your code, then your state machine here can literally have all your different states for your weapons. And that would greatly simplify it. Uh, I wonder if I just figured it out. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this. This is really just like a, a journey of my struggles through the animation and trying to get this you know, real time aiming uh, third person setup working while being able to walk and and while you're standing still and that sort of thing. So before we wrap up, let's just have a quick demo of where we're currently at and and be gentle because it's a little rough around the edges. Uh, so right now he can walk and of course he can like strafe to the right or left and he can like run and strafe and you know, whatever. And he can jump. His jump animation looks great. Uh, I've got that worked out a little bit better. And uh, I will make this code eventually available for everyone. Um, but like, uh, I, I, you know, this is just like currently where we're at. Um, and if I want, I can go ahead and toggle. I can toggle a weapon. So he'll go ahead and toggle that. And I and you can see that it's wobbling because for the idle uh, setting, I haven't built in that ignore right arm states yet. And I haven't built that out. You know, this is just proof of concept and that I focused on the strafes and the walk. But the second I start walking, that arm gets locked. Right. It is not wobbling at all. And it's kind of in line with where it should be. Like if I if I go ahead and shoot, it kind of matches that trajectory pretty well with the ray cast. And again, this is just an animation update. So if you wanted to tweak this a little bit, you can totally just tweak that. And then, of course, as you move up and down, it would just blend uh, between those you know, animation updates or tweaks that you would have. Um, but, you know, I was just trying to do this for a proof of concept and I can go back later and polish up those animations as needed. Uh, so I think this is working really well. There's no logic in there that's telling this arm to like match exactly where the ray cast is. I think, like I said, it, it, it's like about what your game's requirements are. And I think it's pretty it's good enough. Like if you're if you're in here, if you're in here playing and you want to shoot something, it looks like it's aiming where it's going to be firing. Like right now, it might seem like it's a little off and it might be, you know, and I just need to go in there and tweak that animation. Uh, but when I strafe, look, the arm is locked. It's it's locked like to where it should be. Right. And to the right, it's not because I didn't apply those. I didn't I didn't have that state for that. Ignore the arm animation for strafing it. I haven't gone back and done that. But if I strafe to the left, you'll definitely see that his arm can aim down can aim up. And it's just blended between those three animations. And I do need to tweak the animations a little bit so they're a little bit smoother. But I just wanted to have something working. And and of course, when you run, uh, <laughs> you, you saw him fling his arm out in that T pose. I'm still concerned that I'm not going to be able to get rid of that. So when I go from a walk to a run, when I'm in like a uh, weapon stance mode, he flings his arm out to the side like he goes to a T pose, like he blends between a T pose really quick. And and maybe there's something that I need to tweak in my animation or my my whole animation tree setup. So I'm not really sure what to do about that. But, you, you know, I can strafe to the left and run. I can strafe uh, to the right and run. And then I can do the same thing with walking and and, you know, of course, this this solid gun animation here where his arm is still and I, you know, it's working. And I, if I can overcome that, you know, transition between run and his arm flying out like that. So if I turn the gun off, he does. That. You saw his arm fly out really quick. I actually think that's a code problem. This this one where he does this. Uh, let me see if I can do it. That right there and how it's stuck right now. And then if I release and go back, it doesn't do that. That's a code problem. I I, I basically know what that fix is. So I'm going to have to fix that in a future update or whatever or by next week. I'm, I'm hopefully to have this like full demoed out by next week or whatever uh, in a kind of a semi tutorial. Um, but if you guys, you know, switching from run to walk or I guess walk to run flings his arm out. And I, I don't think that's code. I mean, it might be maybe maybe I'm not doing something on time uh, and I need to maybe apply some, you know, the arm adjustment a little faster or ahead of time or reverse the order of how I'm applying the run with the arm adjustment. Uh, so anyways, I I've got some work cut out for me. But again, if you guys have any feedback, please let me know. Maybe you're you're a animation guru and you know how this stuff works uh, a little bit better than I do. And you can kind of weigh in on, on my design and provide me some feedback. And uh, I'd be happy to hear it and, you know, incorporate that into this game, into this demo. And, you know, of course, please subscribe uh, if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. I plan on focusing uh, my energy on some more multiplayer and networking things over the next few weeks. Um, but anyways, if you enjoyed this, make sure to give it a like 
and thanks for watching.